What's up, everybody? I am DJ Casio, and welcome to Talking All That Cas. Now, what is Talking All That Cas? Real quick, breaking it down before I even get to that, let me tell you this. You want to know anything, you want to connect with me on social media, go to this address right here www.djcasio.com. All right? All my stuff's up there Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, all that good stuff is up there. Okay? Now, for 27 years, over 27 years, I've been hosting a weekly radio show here at 90.9 FM KHTC in Salinas, California. Every one of the shows I've ever done that's in my library is now online. You can go to this address right here, mixcloud.com forward slash DJ underscore Casio to hear all the shows, all the music, all the interviews, everything. Okay? Now, speaking of interviews, Maybe you don't have the time to go to Mixcloud and listen to the full shows because there's thousands of hours of stuff to listen to. If that's the case, this is what Talking All That Cows is for. I've isolated all the interviews, taken the interview clips, put them in video form, and I'm posting them up here on YouTube for you guys to check out in a shorter time. All right? So you can just go, pick out whatever interview you want to check out, and here it is, okay? So, without further ado, let's see what I got in store for you this time around. Yes, yes, that's right. We're back in the place right here. It is 90.9 FM, KHDC, Radio Blingway right here in Santa Cruz and Monterey Counties. 104.1 FM out there in San Benito County. And everywhere else on WednesdayRec.com. That's right. You know what it is, man. Interview time, and we got a very special guest joining us That's this right. week, man. Definitely, I mean, one word sums it up, and that's legend. Ooh. That is legend. MC Shidey joining us this week. What's up, man? Yo, yo, what's up, California? How y'all doing out there? All right. Man, All right. It, it, is, uh, it is something having you on the show, man. I, I've wanted to do this for a long time and thanks to social media i finally found a way to get in contact with you we hooked it up and uh here you are man the legend mc shy d yeah, I, i'm very honored to have you on man yeah i'm glad to be here you know what i'm saying um you know just to let people know you know i'm still living and i'm still doing my thing you know so man we gotta we gotta take it way back man so the history of shy d um is always something that um uh, intrigued me because I, I know you were born in the Bronx, but you were raised in Atlanta. So, why why did uh, you relocate, and how old were you when you relocated? Um, I was eleven years old. Believe it or not, my dad was born in Atlanta, and then he transitioned up to New York when he was like about five months old as a baby. Mm -hmm. So he was raised in New York. But my mom is New York born and raised, you know. So basically, uh, when we started getting older, I got a brother that's older than me. He started getting in trouble in New York a lot. So my dad was like, I got to get my family out of here because the city was getting rough at the time. In the 70s, it was 77 to be exact. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, the summer of Sam wasn't a, uh, a good time to be in New York. Ugh, nah, nah, he wasn't playing, boy. He wasn't playing. It was so funny, man, because... We was living in the projects, and, I mean, even the project moms was, like, telling their kids, yo, when the lights come on, I need y'all in the house. Right, right. You know, and, and so when, when you when you have, you know, your, your fundamental uh, growing up, obviously, you have a, the New York attitude, the New York vibe, the New York sensibility. You move down to Atlanta. T tell me about the, the environmental uh, transition you had to make when, when that happened. Well, basically, you know, like you said, New York, you know, when New York people, you know, they they got a lot of energy, they got a lot of aggression, and their attitude is, is, is not as friendly as the South. So when we moved from New York down to Atlanta and people were speaking to you, you know, we looking at them like what they keep speaking to us for, you know, we wasn't used to that. Mm -hmm. So basically we had to kind of humble ourselves if we wanted to be okay in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Because like I say... The, the South, you know, they come to you with open arms, and we wasn't used to that. Right, right. So, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, um, 
like you said, you know, if, if, if somebody, if you were in New York and somebody just walked up to you and said, hey, how are you today? You'd be like, what's wrong with you? But, <laughs> you know, right. d- down south, it's like that's a southern hospitality. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely a, a switch in that way. Um, you know, I, I, I believe early on, maybe it was just a form of expression or maybe it was like, a, you know, a, a true fact. But are you not relate? Are you are you related to Bambata or was that just you saying, oh, that's just my cousin, like a form of expression? Yeah, it was just a form of expression. What it was was Africa Bambata and myself are from the same project. Mm-hmm. We from Browns River Projects in New York City. So basically... Like I say, when Bam and them got out there, Soul Sonic Force, they did their thing around the world. Once I started making records, a couple of years later, maybe about five years later, I came out of 85. I think Soul Sonic came out 81. Right. Make a long story short, I told Bam I was making records. So he said, hey, tell people you my cousin because that'll probably help your career. Mm. You know, so that's how we started doing it. We just basically started calling each other cousins and stuff. Uh, okay, got gotcha, you, right. got gotcha. you. And, you know, the, the first record comes out, Rap Will Never Die, that comes out in 85. Um, was that always your choice to be the first single, or did you have other demos that you thought, maybe we should go this way? Nah, believe it or not, uh, Rap Will Never Die was was uh, a song that I created, I'm just saying, was the first single that I always wanted to create, because I just wanted to let people know that rap was here to stay, you know what I'm saying, that it wasn't going to die, you know, after the Grandmaster Flash, the uh, Spoonie G's, the Treachery mm. Threes, the Soul Sonic Forces, you know. Right. Yeah, because, you know, at that time, it, it definitely was looked upon as a fad, you know, because, yeah. you know, in, in, in the later part of 85, breakdancing died out. So people kind of were under the assumption, well, if the if the most popular um, uh, form of the of the style dies out, then the rest of it will die out. So, you know, it was uh, ad- it was proper that you had that single come out and talked about it. Yeah, definitely, because uh, it's so funny that you said it because graffiti, you know, that started playing out. You know what I'm saying? So the, the culture was the culture was dying. But the the rap was still hanging on by thread. <laughs> right, know? right. You know, the other interesting thing too is, um, you know, the the follow up single uh, was so unique in that, you know, that was like I, other people have you know chopped it up and sampled it here and there, but that was the first time somebody actually sampled Stanford and Son on Shy D is back. Mm. Um, how how did you? Uh, you know, discover, or I mean, obviously you saw the TV show, but when you found out that Quincy Jones was the guy who made the record, I mean, you know, what kind of thought went into like, that's it, we're going to use that for the sample? Well, it, it came behind the success of Rap Would Never Die because if Rap Would Never Die, you know, we used the Pink Panther. Right. So I, I was like, uh, basically I'm on a roll with this. There's no, there's no need of changing it now. You know what I'm saying? Try, try one more, try it one more time. So that's what made me come with the uh, Sanford and Son. Got you, got you. Yeah, because the first two singles were so, um, as you said, you used the Pink Panther, and then uh, and then you used the Sanford and Son. So I mean, it, you know, um, by the time the third one came around, everybody was like waiting, and then like we'll get to that in a little while because that was a a, a, a big um, uh, debut that nobody had sampled that before um, on record. Uh, when you came to that, but um, you know, the uh, the shy D is back and the rap will never die. Um, at that time, were you worried about like clearing those samples because you know everybody got Sue happy like around ninety? <laughs> yeah, believe it or not, they they wasn't really they were still taking rap as a joke. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, uh, what you call them on uh, publishers and big record companies. You know, they was odd. Uh, let them make a few dollars. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then when the the, the millions of dollars, like when the Def Jam really start bringing in the millions, that's when, you know, they start getting serious about And the Biz Markie, Biz Markie, I think, was the first one got in trouble about the sampling, you know? Mm. Um, one Well, he, he had that album, I Need a Haircut, that um, had the, uh, the Gilbert Sullivan sample, but I, I seem to remember... I mean, I could be wrong, but I think Bob James may have done something against Run DMC for Peter Piper. Okay, okay, but a a big company like uh, 
profile, I don't know why they didn't get the sample clear. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's crazy. Man, so, you know, I mean, there's so much uh, in your career to talk about, um, you know, and, and we're going to try to get to as much as we can because I'm going to play one of your, I'm going to play Rap Will Never Die in just a second here. But, um, you know, talk to me about what Shy D is up to nowadays. Well, basically, uh, you know, um, I was hip-hop all the way around, break dancing. The only thing I didn't know how to do was the graffiti, you know what I'm saying? I knew how to DJ, so basically... Um, as I got older, I said, hey, I got to get out of this game. I'm getting too old. I, I just started DJing, and I started DJing at local bars around here in Atlanta where I live at. So right to this day, 2020, as we speak, that's what I do for a living now. I'm a DJ at a couple of sports bars out here in Atlanta. Right, right. And so is that, um, I mean, is is it like, you know, I, 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 don't, I don't know how – uh, which, which way to phrase it But I mean All this new technology I mean yeah. is, it, is it hard to like Not I, In no way saying You're an old guy But is it hard to teach An old dog new tricks Oh no definitely You know one thing about me I'm, I'm eager to learn uh-huh. And You know I got kids So basically When I was raising my kids And stuff I start Buying them You know these different things The iPod at the time You know different things So basically they was keeping their dad up with the technology. You know what I'm saying? So I got to take my hat off to my kids for keeping me up on the computer, you know, teaching me how to work the computer and everything else like that, you know? No no question, man. I know I see a lot of uh, – you, pu- you put up a lot of um, uh, mix sessions that you're doing up on mm-hmm. Facebook. I see that a lot. Um, you know, I don't know how it strikes you, but this is one thing that I, I – it, it's just like a real pet peeve to me. I see a lot of DJs. Like they'll be, um, you know, putting up their, uh, they'll be going live doing their mixes, right? And yeah. and the the premise they'll say like, I'm going in the mix old school style. I'm gonna play it all old school, right? And okay. they'll have like a wall of records behind them, <laughs> all you know, clearly old school stuff. But they're only using like Serato and that. I'm like, you have the records behind you. Use the records. Don't if you're gonna go old school, do it the right way. Yeah, yeah, yeah not a. Uh, I mean, they're going to tell you they're going old school, but like I say, they're going to use that Serato because it's so, you know, not trying to be funny. I gave a friend of mine two years ago 10,000 records because I didn't need them no more. Oh. I gave it to him for free. Oh, right. you're killing I, me. I, no joke. I gave a friend of mine 10,000 records. I was trying to clear my garage. I was like, hey, man, these albums is, you know, got my garage flooded. Please come get these albums. So I gave a friend of mine ten thousand albums. Man, man, and and that's that's like all genres across the board, right? Yep, everything. I'm talking about from the BGs to uh, what's my man Frankie Frankie Valley? The uh-huh. Four Seasons. Wow, yeah. wow. So then, when when you do something like that, what do you do? You just automatically start rebuilding via MP3. Yeah, that's what you got to do. Just basically, what I do. I mean, even with all this music that came out over time, I only get certain records because I don't want to even have a, 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 a external hard drive with about 10,000 songs. I'm not going to play 10,000 songs in my lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I only get the records that really was an impact on what was going on at the time, you know? I hear you. I hear you, man. I'm, I'm still, I'm still thinking of that ten thousand records. Just like, go ahead, come Jeez. and get them. I've been like, man, you, you know, you could have like DM me, and I would have drove cross country, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely. I mean, I'm definitely. Matter of fact, it's so funny. Like I said, that was two years ago. Now, right before this virus dropped, let's say around Oof. February, I told him come get two more, two more thousand records. Wow. Wow. That was up in my room. He got the ones out of the garage, but I I was in my room one day and I walked across and looked. I said, "Man, I got to call him back and come get these." Well, let me ask you this: Is has there was there anything in there you haven't been able to replace? Well, I'm gonna be honest with you. When I gave him the album, I left him in the garage. You know, I was in the house, so oh. whatever he took, I don't know. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I don't know if I could do that because my records are like my kids. I don't know if I could do that, man. I don't know if oh, I could wow. do that. But, hey, man, hey, I want you to stay on the line. We're going to uh, – I'm going to run Rap Will Never Die right now, 
and then we're going to come back and talk to you some more because I want to talk about when you really started because the, the first couple singles were like underground hits, but then you really started getting a lot of success with um, the second album and a couple of songs off of there. So hold on the line. We're going to come back and talk to you in just a second. But uh, this right here is MC Shy D, the one that kicked it off. This is Rap Will Never Die. 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 Rap That's right, man. We're back in the place right here. It is 90.9 FM KHDC Radio Bilingue here in Salinas, Santa Cruz, Monterey, 104.1 FM, Hollister, San Juan Batista, South Gilroy. And everywhere else on WednesdayRec.com. Look at that timing. There we go. Finally. We are making it happen, man. Speaking of making it happen, back still joined in the place by the one and only MC Shy D. Man, the guy that's got to be tough. The guy that uh, he's back. Um, he's uh, <laughs> he, he, he wants you to dance. He wants someone to shake it. He wants someone to shake it. <laughs> he wants it all, man. Shy D back in joining us tonight. Um, man, so we just got done here on Rap Will Never Die. That was going back to 85. Once again, using the Pink Panther sample. Um, who produced that? Believe it or not, they gave the credit to a guy by the name of Frank Cadillas. Uh-huh. But let me tell you how he got the credit. He he got the credit because I didn't know how to work an 808 at the time. Let me tell you how I put the song together in the studio. They brought Frank Cadillas, they brought an 808 in the, uh, a studio. I told him, program this beat when I beat it on the table. I beat the whole rap would never die on the table. And then I told him I want the song, the Pink Panther, to get played like this because he, he had a, knew how to play a keyboard, too. All so right. basically, I produced the whole song to him, but he played everything, so they gave him the producing credit. Ah, okay. I see. Could have been I a see. co-production, man. <laughs> yeah, they didn't, even, they didn't even give me that. Uh, you know what I'm saying? They didn't give me nothing. They... They they should have gave him co producing, gave me producing. They gave, <laughs> there you go. they gave him producing and gave me nothing. <laughs> you could use that publishing, right? Nah, I don't even get publishing on the song. Wow. Oh, wow. Man crazy man hey so i'm not here alone i got my my co-host v dog in here with me he's uh he's chomping at the bit he's got a couple questions for you just, just, just so okay couple. what up v dog what how you doing mc shy dude oh, man, i'm chilling man chilling oh, yeah no, speaking of that i i figured you kind of have no choice in these uh crazy times going on you're right how how, yeah. how are you holding up knowing that you know you you were doing the club business you know as far as uh as far as djing and everything how's that affecting you man I mean, well, basically, the key ahead. word is you got to save your money yeah. for days like these. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? something I've done. Yep. So, yeah, so you know, I'm just, I'm just not a guy. You know, like I say, I live by myself now. My kids are grown, so oh. all of them are gone. So I live by myself. So basically, uh, um, I just got to take care of me, and and like I'm not a guy that spend money. You know, I don't got no fancy cars. I don't right. wear fancy clothes. So. I saved my money. I never knew a day like this would come, but I thank God I saved my money for the days like these. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you're not getting no, you know, nothing back, no kickback, nothing like that. They're not taking care of you in that sense. You're just kind of, I mean, that's good to save your money because a lot of people are in that situation. But uh, Yeah, well, you know, when you DJing in the club, you consider to be self-employed. So ah, yeah, good point. They don't look at you as one of their employees. They look at you as work for hire. Ah, so basically, okay. You you on your own, right? Yeah. <laughs> In, okay. Independent contractor. Yeah, that's right. That's, that's, that's true. What you are. That's true. That, 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 okay. that, that's one of the bummers okay. of it, man. Definitely one of the bummers of it. Okay, and then uh, uh, my other question. So, being that um, I was basically a to- toddler in the '80s and had no real clue about hip hop until the '90s. Um, the first song I ever heard from you was the Shake It song, but the one the DJ Smurf version. So, I just want to know because I've I, I've I've heard that album, so a lot of it, and I want to know. So, was what was the concept behind make remaking that song and having it come back that year in '96? Well, basically, it was so crazy because the mix and everything on the song was bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> okay. I wanted that that record was so mixed, so bad and stuff. So, I mean, it, it really hurted the record more than it helped it. You talking about but the I first want- version? Yeah, the one oh, okay. on the, um, you talking about the record, not, not the, the minutes on the first record was dope. Oh, first, okay. The no, first, the first, he, he first still, one yeah. in 88 okay. was dope. Right. Okay, right. got it. A guy by the name of Michael Sterling, he, he did the engineering and mix on that. 
Okay. We went to we you know when you got your homeboys that done put a studio in their house mm, and mm. you you trying to save money. We went to the homeboy studio on that album. That's why that shake it version sounded that bad. <laughs> but I wanted to put the record back out for like guys like you, the youngsters, to be introduced to me. You know what I'm All saying? Right. Mm-hmm. All right. Cool. Yeah, you know, no, one one of the things is um, when, uh, you know, Rap Will Never Die and, and Shy D is back and even I Gotta Be Tough, which we're going to play in, in a couple minutes here, um, you, 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 you had a strong vocabulary, but it seemed like um, as times were changing and, you know, Two Live Crew was gaining a lot of uh, a lot of steam and, you know, picking up with their stuff, uh, the whole um, down south scene kind of shied away from uh using a vocabulary to more just you know, like you know uh you know i guess you would say simplistic lyrics um so when you made shake it and you really uh that was like you're probably you know the one that really blew up for you uh what was the the mind state and the the approach going into making records at that point uh for after shake it or during shake it uh you know, d- during and after. Well, basically, check it. You know, one thing, um, we always, you know, wherever we go, I was traveling with two live crew, so they whole, they whole uh, mm-hmm. party thing is dealing with women. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So, Tunk, DJ Tunk was with me at the time. Me, DJ Tunk, and Mike Press. DJ Tunk was like, hey, man. We need to get some of these girls on our side, man. You need to, you a battle rapper. You need to loosen up a little bit. Let's let's try to come up with something dealing with the ladies. You know what I'm saying? Right. So basically, I was like, okay, well, you know, Mike Fresh made the beat up to shake it, and basically, I lightened up on my lyrics. You know what I'm saying? I was just telling a story about me getting with a girl, going to the club, but she would not dance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then, as you say, after. Like I said, you had the NWAs coming out at the time. You know what I'm saying? You had the two shorts coming out at the time, so <clears throat> the lyrics was getting a little rough, but I was always still feeling inside of me, hey, that's not my style. I don't rap like that. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to leave that to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man, because I remember, uh, man, it, it was like there was a point where radio out here commercial radio was playing shake it so much it was yeah, like one, it was like real. once an hour you're hearing it you know and i remember going to a uh to uh studio 47 in san jose and you were performing there on new year's eve and okay. and man when when that when that came on man that that song was the whole place went crazy man yeah, that was a real creative club. The way they had the juveniles on one side, they had the grown people on the other side. Oh, <laughs> uh, see, see, you remember that? You remember I'll that? I'll never forget that club till I die, man. I thought that was the most brilliant, brilliant thing in the world with I, doing a club like that. I will always say, as, as as old as I get till the day I die, Studio Forty Seven was the best club I've ever been to. That's right. I I, I love that place, man. High school, a uh, man. You know, from mm-hmm. sophomore year till about. I was maybe a year out of high school. It was like a good maybe four, five year run. Man, you couldn't touch Studio Forty Seven. Nah, that was a that was a beautiful club, man. I'll never forget that club till I die. Yeah, man, definitely good times there, man. So, I mean, if you had to like think of one of your best uh, uh, tour, um, you know, going on tour doing shows, uh, a good story that's clean for radio. <laughs> you know what? What's one of the funniest things that you ever experienced on the road? Well, I mean, it's so many. Um, I think, I think um, one time we was out on a tour bus, and we was in uh, we was in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and I met a young lady at the mall, mm-hmm. and um. So basically, uh, you know, she came, she hung out with me at the show later on that night. So she did like, uh, I I forgot the name of the movie with uh, Eddie Murphy, when the guy, remember the guy called home and told his daughter, let me speak to your mom. And then. Yeah, yeah. She she played Sunshine. That was that her? Yeah, that movie Mm. right there. Okay. That's what the girl, that's what the girl did 
she called her mom and told her mom, um, I'll be back home in a couple of months. I'm going on the road with this guy. <laughs> wow. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. And she went, out, she went out on the road with us. She stayed out on the road with us for about three months. Damn. And um, she was riding on the tour bus all around the United States with us. And when we got back to Miami, I put her on a Greyhound bus. I, I, I back to Louisiana. I thought you were going to say, so we left her in the next town. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. I kept her with me though. She was she was a great person, man, and I I would love to know who she was. I don't even remember who she was. Oh man. Not right to this day to be honest with you, I would love to know who that young lady was so I I could hook back up with her 35 years <laughs> later. Mm, hey go. man, you never know, man. You might uh, open up your door one day and they'd be like, "Hey, I'm your son." And it'd be like a guy with a beard. <laughs> I would, I would love to. That's another thing that's so funny you mentioned that. I would love to know if I have kids out there. You know, <laughs> I, you know, from California to New York. You right. know what I'm saying? I would mm-hmm. love to know that. I don't. What you call them kids? They got a special name for them. Illegitimate. Illegitimate. Yeah. Ill- illegitimate. I would love to know if I have illegit- illegitimate children. I mean, because it'd be a blessing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, until they start asking you for the money. Mm. Well, there's no money here, so they <laughs> yeah. can't ask. <answer> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you, 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 you get a you get a hug and a handshake. That's about yeah, it. Yeah, you, know, yeah. <laughs> you know. Man, man. So you know, um, I wanted to uh, before before I let you go because we're gonna jump into I gotta be tough. Um, how can people you know find you on social media? Give out those links so people can follow you, watch you, all that good stuff. Okay, um, I got a main Facebook page, but I don't know why it's my main Facebook page with my real name, my middle name. My middle name is Thomas Jones. Mm-hmm. So they can, uh, on Facebook, they can look up Thomas Jones, but I also have a page on Facebook. It's called The Real MC Shy D, but I don't never go on that page. Right, right. And um, on uh, Instagram, everything is MC Shy D, MC S H Y D. On Twitter, everything is MC Shy D, but that's about it. And you're also, um, you're also, uh, you have mixes for sale too, right? If like people want to uh, shoot you on Venmo or something like that. Uh, no, nah, I don't. I, I I did put it out there, but then I took it down. I said, nah, you know. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm right. okay. You right. know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. I, I, I thought you. I thought you were slanging mixes too. My bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. My nah. Bad. I saw. I saw a couple of DJs do it. So I post that. So I was like, let me post it and see can I get a bite. And nice. I got too many bites. I said, nah. Well, they're not gonna be taking up my time. Me sitting here, you know, putting mixes on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. On flash drives. You know. So I took it down. Oh, okay. Got you. Got you. Wait, well, hey man. Uh, real quick, anything? What's what's coming up next for you? You got you working on any music, or are you strictly just DJing? I'm strictly just DJing. Um, what I gotta do? Um, uh, I got uh, my cousin. Well, you know, we saw Bambada. He's over in, in Brazil, so he's telling me that these people want to book me over here for a bunch of shows. So what I'm in the process of doing now is trying to renew my um, what you passport. Uh huh. Mm. So. Once this situation is over with this pandemic, I can go back and hit the road and start doing some shows again. Got you. Got you. Well, hey, man, once again, really appreciate you taking the time to uh, call in and talk to us tonight. 